Welcome to the first episode of our anthology series, Armeng Vlachs. In this first episode, we will be talking about etymology and origins. Not many people have ever heard of the Vlachs. We are a very small people, and as such, we have been faced with many challenges over the millennia. Persecution, assimilation, isolation, ridicule, controversy, and the list goes on. The very question of who we are has not really been given the attention that it deserves. As with all small peoples that never established a country of their own, we have been used by bigger powers and by historiography and ethnology of those big powers in order to serve their own interests. The official Greek position is that we are Greeks that speak with a Latin dialect. But here's the thing. I cannot understand a single word when I hear Greeks speaking amongst themselves. The official Romanian position is that we are Romanians, but the general Romanian public has a different perception on who we are, but that deserves its own video. Croatian historiography tells us that all the Vlachs that used to live in Dalmatia and Bosnia in the Middle Ages, and that founded Dubrovnik by the way, and the very name of the patron saint of Dubrovnik being Saint Vlaho is kind of telling and it, all that is very well documented and Vlachs controlled all trade in the Serbian Empire which in the time of Tsar Dusan controlled almost all of the Balkan Peninsula the official position of Croatia is that those Vlachs were simply Croats that were sheep herders and that the name Vlach just means a shepherd. That is complete and utter nonsense. Because if the fancy sitting dwelling Croats wanted to come up with a derogatory term for the other Croats that were sheep herders, they would have simply used their own word for that. Sheep herder in Croatian is called Chovan, and in Serbian it is called Ovček. That is just one more case of appropriation by the growing nationalism like, they were not different, they were ours, and they will come up with a whole bunch of silly explanations why that is so. But however much they try, that is just simply nonsense. That is why I feel that there is a need for us to tell our own story, before we all forget who we are and where we come from. That is why I am making this series, and here I will present the results of all the research that I have done throughout my life, everything that I have heard and remembered from the elders, how they declare our identity, and what has been the relationship that we have had with the other Balkan peoples and tribes, and how the powers that be in all periods have treated us. Our ancestral homeland is in the Pindos Mountains in Epirus in Greece. Our language is part of the Romance group of languages and it is the first one that diverged from the original Latin, according to linguists, that is. For millennia, we have been semi-nomadic pastoralists. I will go into more detail in a video dedicated fully on the pastoral way of life, or as it is fashionable to call it nowadays, transhumanism. Let me just give you a basic outline now. Basically. It just means that you spend the summer months up in the mountains and you spend the winter months down in the valleys because you need to make sure that your massive sheep stock has enough food to eat. This way of life was varied. Like the richer clans, yeah, we have clans. This will also be further explained in its own video as well. So the richer clans had two sets of households a summer one and a winter one. The not so rich clans had only one estate and they would rent the, uh, the one that they didn't have. Some would rent houses with land and there are even tales and traditions that some would only rent land and would build rudimentary straw huts to live in. That is all very well documented. The very name Flax, Balax, Flassi, in all its variations is indeed an exonym. We call ourselves Agmai. 
in the 19th century scholars started referring to us as Aromanians, and that name kind of stuck, but the term Vlach still prevails in the Balkan countries. There is a nonsensical explanation of our name by historians that we are called Aromanians because we are not Roman and the A in the front is just a negation. Like, how can any serious scholar make such a claim is just beyond me. But if we look at the term Arman in singular and Arman in the plural, in our language that is the word to stay. Example, yo, Arman, means I stay, while yo esku Arman means I am Vla. It all leads to we are the ones that stayed, that remained, the ones that were not assimilated and the ones that kept our traditions and everything that makes us who we are. I am sure that there was a large number of us that didn't stay, as throughout history and in many places, people will adapt, people will assimilate, people will change who they are, be it for monetary gain or simply for a better life. People will adapt to what suits them best, but we have stayed. Throughout the millennia, we have remained Agmai. Historiography has already decided that we are descended from the veterans of the Roman 5th Legion, that we were settled in the mountainous region of Epirus in northern Greece in order to safeguard the most important road in the Roman Empire, the Via Ignatia. That theory is mainly derived from yet another name that other people used to refer to us. The term that Serbs refer to us is Cincari, which comes from our own word for five. In our language for five we say Cinci, hence the connection to the fifth legion. But I have a few problems with that theory, namely human nature and how people behave in certain situations and when faced with certain challenges. There have been countless examples when people have been resettled and almost always the newcomers take on the language and the culture of the indigenous population. Examples: The Bulgars, a Mongol tribe, came to Slavic lands and had to start using the Slavic local language to make it all work. And we have Bulgaria where everybody speaks a Slavic language. The Franks, a Germanic tribe, came to Gallo-Roman lands and they had to start using the Gallo-Roman language to make all of that work. And now we have France, where everybody speaks a Romance language, not a Germanic one. And the example can go, can go on and on. The only exception of this rule that I can think of is Hungary where a ruling Hunic minority managed to impose their Asiatic, Asiatic language to their local subjects of Slavic and Germanic descent. But hey, and all historians are very confident that those Roman legionnaires that took local women as wives from the Paleo-Balkan tribes had managed to impose the Latin language. But that doesn't really make any sense at all, because I know my people and I know how we behave with outsiders. We have always been a close community. Mixed marriages were a very big taboo up until recently. When my own uncle married outside of our people, it, back in 1989, it was a big scandal. I'm not gonna go into details for the sake of privacy, but it took quite a few years for my family to fully embrace my aunt. And all historians now are telling us that way back when the Romans came and we were all welcoming and accommodating and embraced them and said, hey, what the hell, this Latin thing sounds nice, from now we will use only Latin. And after that acceptance and transformation, then what? Did we just suddenly decide, okay, now we're perfect and from now on we will never accept any more outsiders, like ever. I am trivializing things a little, but that is only to bring the point across that the theory of the 5th legion is complete nonsense, but you will say, hey, 
You said that you speak a language that is very close to Latin. All in good time, my friends. I will get around to explaining all that in its very own video in this series. Stay tuned. We have always been a proud people. Up until, up until my generation, that is. Most of my fellow Agmon now have no idea what it is to be Agmon. They don't speak the language and they are fully integrated into the society where they live and what makes me angry is that so many are even ashamed of it and hide their heritage. I'm disgusted by those people. But still, that is the curse of being a minority everywhere and not having a country of your own. I try to use the language as much as I can. With my friends, we talk vlog in public. Like when we are at a coffee shop, we use it to gossip about everybody around because nobody understands us, nobody understands what we're saying. But all the time, we will meet somebody like somebody will come, hear us and will come and will say in a hushed tone, Don't say that! No, they will hear that we are vlog. No, 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 they will laugh. Like, that is just stupid. I really don't understand those people. Other people have been insulting us since like forever. In the Balkans, they make jokes about us. Similarly, like people in America make, jo make jokes about the Jews or how the English do the Scottish jokes. Basically, we are like the Jews in the Balkans. They say like things like, we're stingy, we're all bankers, we control all the money, we secretly control all governments. I wish it was true, by the way. There are even conspiracy theorists that go on TV shows all the time and talk about this, mostly in Serbia. The Serbs have a thing about such talk shows, they're very popular there. They keep talking how there is a secret black society that pulls all the strings in all the Balkan countries. I mean, it is true that blacks have held important positions in all countries in the Balkans, and even now some do. For example, the current Albanian Prime Minister in Zlah and many others that are in high positions in government in all of the Balkan countries. But the conspiracy theories really go into fantasy land. But if by any chance there is such a society, hit me up, I want in. Thank you so much for your attention. I look forward to chatting with you more in the next episode.